Hi, assalamualaikum and good day to all of the students. Today we are going for this session. We are going to continue for chapter three, energy balance. We have covered up until chapter two, mass balance. Now we move on to chapter three, energy balance. All right. So I hope you get ready and we are going to continue for this lecture. Okay, we begin with energy balance with the introduction. What is energy balance? Energy balance basically they are based on the first law of thermodynamics whereby the quantity of energy going into the system is equivalent with the quantity of energy going out together with the any accumulation if it occur in that particular system. But then basically when we want to calculate for a quantity of heat, uh, or quantity of energy in a system, normally we will assume that the condition of the system is in steady state. So in a steady state condition, the accumulation of other products is considered as zero. Okay, what types of accumulation? This one can be a waste of the products or maybe the energy that is going out that is not going to be used um, in order to heat the product and etc. Alright, so under steady state condition, an object will absorb energy from its surrounding at the same time whereby it will emit the energy to its surrounding at the same rate. So energy balance basically they are useful in food industry and food processing uh, industries whereby it involves with the heating as well as the cooling processes to ensure that the fluids uh, used for heat exchange are adequately provided. And the equipment is uh, the the size of the equipment is adequately to uh, achieve the process objective of a desired capacity. So when we want to design a, a, a um, equipment and equipment, so we need to make sure that the size of the equipment will not having any energy loss. We want to make sure that we have the optimum energy that is going to be absorbed. Uh, or going to be emitted by the system itself. Alright, so heat is a mechanism by which energy is transferred between a system and in its environment because of the temperature difference between them. So for example, if let's say you heat a product, of course you will sense that the product is hot. So that is the heat transfer from, one, uh, from the surrounding to the product. Okay, the, basically we will use the symbol of Q to represent the amount of energy that is going to be transferred by the system and the environment. And the unit that we are going to use for the Q in SI unit is Joule. So it can be kilojoule or it can be Joule. Kilojoule meaning that we have to the power of 3. But then if let's say we don't have that the uh, kilo, K, small K, then it's just Joule. Alright, so the, uh, the equation that we are going to use to calculate the amount of heat is Q equals to M Cp delta T, where M is the mass. And since we are going to use with SI unit, so M, uh, the mass is uh, will be calculated in kilogram. Whereby for the Cp, Cp is the specific heat. So specific heat, each product they have their own specific heat. Each fluid they have their own specific uh, specific heat. So uh, you do not use other material specific heat in order for you to calculate the amount of energy. It must be specific. Right? And then the unit for uh, specific heat is joule per kilogram degree Celsius. Right? And then delta T is the temperature difference. Temperature difference between uh, the end product minus by the initial temperature of the product. So that one is delta T and the value of, uh, sorry, the... A unit that we use for temperature is degree Celsius and it can be also be used in Kelvin. Alright, Kelvin they don't have degree but Kelvin is a set of temperature that is in SI unit as well. Alright, so for forms of heat energy that entering into the food processing uh, operation or food processing system, we have two, two types of uh, uh, forms of heat. The first one is sensible heat. Sensible heat is whereby we can sense the uh, heat whereby the product is hot or cold. Right? Uh, heat is, uh, is uh, when they are being added or subtracted from food materials. When the heat is being added, meaning the product is, being, uh, is getting hot 
and when the energy is going out from the product, meaning that the product is cold, alright, whereby we can sense the changes in the temperature. Alright, unit for the sensible heat, this one is delta H, delta H, H, the unit, uh, the value for H normally is being used as joule and it also can be used uh, to represent uh, enthalpy. Okay, so delta H is equivalent to Q, alright, so Q equals to MCP delta T and whereby if let's say we have the differences of delta H, it can also be represented by the equation of MCP delta T. Alright, and then the second form of heat is latent heat. Latent heat, this one also can be used in calculation of the enthalpy for the product, whereby the heat is being uh, heat required to change a physical uh, state of the material at a constant temperature. Alright, for example, from solid to liquid, liquid to gas, or solid to gas. For example, we have a dry ice. Dry ice it occur at a solid state but then when you expose to the environment it does not transfer into liquid state in fact it transfer from dry ice the solid solid state it immediately transfer to gas right so that one is latent heat okay for uh, and another example solid to liquid whereby you have an ice cube and then when you put into the room temperature the ice starts to melt it tends to become liquid become water so it has its own latent heat in order for it to liquefy okay unit for latent heat is represented by lambda and the unit is joule per kilogram all right so total latent heat here is m times by latent heat. This particular latent heat, this latent heat is considered as enthalpy. Alright, enthalpy and the unit is joule per kilogram whereby M is the kilogram. Okay, so this one we have, uh, I have already uh, explain to you the first law of thermodynamics whereby the energy it cannot be destroyed neither can be created it can change from one state to another state so the energy coming out into a unit operation can be balanced with the energy coming out sorry the energy going into the system it is equivalent with the energy coming out from the system together with the energy stored or any accumulation Okay, so we have this uh, total energy, energy going in, total energy going in. We may have several energies that going into the system. Okay, so it is being represented by delta ER. Okay, and then we have the energy leaving from the system together with the products. Okay, so you can have several products that going out from the system, so it is being represented by del uh, delta E, P. P is meant for product, P1, P2, P3, depending on the amount, on the quantity of the product that you have that is going to leave the system. Okay, then if let's say we have, if let's say the system is not in a steady state condition, then you may have with the waste, you may have to deal with the waste materials and you may have to deal with the energy loss to the surrounding and probably the energy that is being stored in the system itself. Okay, but then we consider that our condition is in steady state, meaning that there is a no waste, no energy being stored and no energy loss, meaning that energy going in equivalent to energy going out. Okay, now let's move on with the first example for energy balance. Okay, so the first example, calculate the specific heat of beef rolls containing 15% of protein, 20% of fat, 60% of water by using the following equation. Alright, this particular value is specific. This one is the specific heat for uh, solid non-fat fraction. This particular value, 1674.72, this one is meant for specific heat for fat fraction. And 4186.8, this one is meant specific heat for water. 
Okay, so in order for you to use this equation, you need to know which product is going to be inserted into this equation. Alright, so we have this solid non-fat fraction. So which one is considered as solid non-fat fraction? Okay, we have protein, we have uh, fat and then we have water. So solid non-fat fraction is anything that is not related to fat. Alright, so this one it can be protein and it can be water. But then when we look at this equation, we can see there is a water fraction. So you cannot put water fraction into this particular column. So this one solid non-fat is meant for the protein. Alright, so this one, how you are going to uh, solve this problem is whereby... You need to calculate 837.36 times by solid non-fat fraction. We are going to take 15% of the protein inside here. So this one is 15% plus 1674.72 of fat fraction. Fat fraction is 20% given in this problem statement is 20% plus 4186.8 water fraction. Water fraction has been given as 65%. Okay. So, in order for you to calculate. Now, let, uh, let's move on. Let's go to the calculation. How you need to do it is whereby you type by 837.36. You need to times by. Okay. Solid non-fat fraction. It is for protein. So, protein is 15%. 15% meaning that. 1, 5, 15 divided by 100. So, what is the answer? It is 0 0.15. Okay? Then, you need to plus. Plus with 1674.72 times by. What is the value for fat fraction? Fat fraction is 20%. 20 divided by 100. You will get the value of 0 0.2. Okay? Then plus by water fraction, 4186.8 okay, times by, what is the value for water fraction? 65%. 65 divided by 100, you will get 0 0.65. Okay, so try to calculate this one and get your answer. Okay, the answer is supposed to be, let me check my lecture notes first. Okay, the answer should be 3170.27. Okay, what is the unit now? Okay, what is the unit that you are going to use? Unit is important. If let's say you missed out the unit, then marks will be deducted because you do not know which unit that you need to include, you need to insert in your uh, answer. Alright, so actually the unit has been given over here. Okay, can you see this one? The following equation, joule per kilogram degree Celsius. So, the unit has been given. So, what will be the unit that you are going to use? You need to use the unit that has been provided by the problem statement. Alright, so it is joule per kilogram degree Celsius. So, this is your answer. Alright. Okay, then we move on to next example. By using the value of specific heat in example 1, the previous example whereby you get 3170.72, uh, sorry, 3170.27. Alright, so you need to calculate for the specific heat. Uh, sorry, you need to calculate for the energy required, the heat required to raise the temperature of 4.535 kg of beef roast containing 15% of protein, 20% of fat, and 65% of water. If you can see here, the percentage of fat, protein, and water is similar with the previous example. Alright, so you just need to use the value that you have calculated for CP just now. 
it is 3170.27 okay and the temperature temperature it is being increased from 4.44 degrees celsius to 65.55 degrees celsius so how you're going to solve this problem is by applying the equation q equals to mcp delta t all right so we use we solve this online Okay, then you have here M. What is the value for M? M is 4.535 kilogram. Okay, normally I will prefer to put it in a, a bracket so that it's easier for me to separate from one value to another value. Okay, CP that we have calculated just now is 312, uh, sorry, 3170.27. Okay, and the unit is joule per kilogram degree celsius again bracket put bracket it's easier for you to differentiate between one unit to another unit and another bracket will be delta t delta t the final temperature divide uh, sorry the final temperature subtract with initial temperature okay final temp temperature minus initial temperature so final temperature is 65.55 minus by 4.44 degree celsius okay please calculate and then you will get the answer let me know what is your answer and then what about the unit okay please check the unit here the unit here this one we have kilogram kilogram joule per kilogram degree celsius this one is degree celsius so you need to know which unit that you can cancel out in order for you to obtain the final unit in your answer okay so kilogram can be cancelled out with kilogram because this one kilogram is on the top part this value kilogram is at the lower part so we can cancel out kilogram and kilogram and then we have this degree celsius so degree celsius cancel out with degree celsius so what is a left the unit that is left is only joule okay so the value is please calculate on your own and then this is the final unit joule for your answer okay so far so good okay now let's move on to next example all right, this one is a common type of uh, question that is going to be given to you during your test or your final exam. All right, so another example, a liquid food product, example two, a liquid food product is being cooled from 85 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius. All right, in a heat exchanger, by using cold water as a medium. If the product flow rate is 100 kg per hour, determine the water flow rate required to accomplish product cooling. Alright, this particular example, it involved with cooling, cooling process. The previous example, example 1A, is involved with heating process. So, this one is cooling process. If the water is allowed to increase from 5 degrees Celsius to 15 degrees Celsius in the heat exchanger. Okay, and then the specific heat of each material is being given here. And can you see the unit for the specific heat is kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. Okay, why Kelvin and degrees Celsius can be used in this calculation? Because the temperature difference between degree celsius and kelvin is similar for every increment of one degree celsius for example from uh, 25 degree celsius to 26 degree celsius is equivalent with the increment of one kelvin okay but then this particular temperature difference is not similar with degree fahrenheit because degree fahrenheit is a british unit Okay, so assume steady state condition. So first what you need to do is please draw a block diagram and make sure that you pull all the information that you can get from
from this problem statement and write it down at your block diagram. Okay, you need to identify which product is going into the system and which product is coming out from the system. Okay, so the first thing, a liquid food product is being cooled from 85 to 25 degrees Celsius. So we have the initial temperature of the food product that going into the system because we want to cool down. For example, you have your refrigerator whereby you want to cool down your food product. So in a refrigerator, of course, the product, the temperature of the product is slightly higher, but then when it goes into the refrigerator, it will cool down. Okay, so this one is the food product going into the system. So at first, the temperature is 85 degrees Celsius. All right. And then we have a cold water as a medium. Cold water, this one, it is like a, an insulation. It is outside of your uh, unit operation, your refrigerator. At the outside of the refrigerator, there is a uh, insulation for the water to flow to cool down the product. All right. So this one will be the channel for the channel stream for the cold water okay the temperature is five degrees celsius okay so since we use cold water to reduce the temperature of the product of course the heat from the food product will be absorbed by the cold water so the temperature of the cold water will start to increase because it absorbs heat there is a heat transfer from the hot food product to the cold water so that's why cold water will the temperature of the cold water will increase whereby the temperature of the food product will decrease because there is a heat transfer okay and then if the product flow rate is 100 kg per hour product flow rate meaning that the product going into the system okay the flow rate is 100 kg per hour all right uh, the water is allowed, okay, we control the temperature for the cold water. It should increase from a 5 degrees Celsius to 15 degrees Celsius. Why the temperature of this cold water increase? Because it absorbs heat from the food product here. Okay, and then the food product, the temperature of food product will cool down. It is being cooled down until 25 degrees Celsius. Alright, so specific heat has been given so what you are going to do is you need to calculate for the amount of heat q equals to mcp delta t but in this particular slide i have written out step by step of how you want to calculate for the product okay i divide it for you to calculate for the amount of energy for the inlet and the amount of energy for the outlet Okay, so now from here, we have two inlet and two outlet. Okay, clear? So from the problem statement, we have the product uh, mass flow rate is 100 kg per hour. And then the specific heat for food is being given 3.2, whereby for the water is 4.18 kJ per kilogram Kelvin. Please take note for this unit. In previous example, it's only joule per kilogram degree Celsius, whereby for this example, we use kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. Okay, and then rate of energy input, this one is the M prime. M prime, this one is equip, this one is the mass of the food product. H is the enthalpy, or this one is the sensible heat, Cp times by T. Okay, so at a steady state condition, energy input equivalent to energy output. So now let's calculate for the inlet, uh, for, sorry, for the water first, water stream. Okay, for water, we have inlet and outlet, input and output. So the first one, H water inlet, H is the sensible heat, whereby it is being calculated by Cp times by T. So, Cp for the water is 4.18 times by temperature. Okay, this one, 278.15. Where do I get this value? Okay, this value is from your problem statement here. Okay, this one is degree Celsius. The temperature is in degree Celsius. So, you need to convert to 
Kelvin because the unit that is being used here is Kelvin. Okay? So, 5 degrees Celsius, you need to convert to Kelvin. So, how you are going to do that is whereby 5 degrees Celsius, 5, okay? In order for you to calculate for the temperature in Kelvin from the degree Celsius, 5 plus with 273.15. So, you will get 278.15, okay? And when you calculate, Please use your scientific calculator. You will get the value of 1162.67 kilojoule per kilogram for the water inlet. Alright, then we move on to the water outlet. Okay, so the CP is again the same one. Regardless of the temperature, the specific heat for the material is the same. Okay, 4.18 times by 288.15. Where does it come from? This one is the from 15 degrees Celsius, 15 plus 273.15, you will get 288.15. Okay, the value is 1204.47 kilojoule per kilogram. Then we calculated, we calculate for the value of food product. We have food going into the system and food product going out from the system. Okay, so for the food going into the system, this one, the CP has been given as 3.2 times by 358.15. This one is the value of 85 degrees Celsius. 85 plus 273.15. So, you will get 358.15 times by 3.2. And you will manage to get this answer. Alright, whereby for the food product going out from the system, the temperature, the final temperature that we want to achieve for the final product is 25 degrees Celsius. Alright, so 3.2 times by 298.15. You will get 954.08 kilojoule per kilogram. Okay, so we have calculated for the food product as well as for the uh, water, cold water. So now what you need to do is you need to divide for the inlet and you need to divide for the outlet. Okay, so we have the water going into the system. We have the food going into the system. And then we have the food product going out from the system as well as the water, cooling water going out from the system. So we have calculated here just now. Okay, so for the food product is 1146.08. Plus with for water, 1162.67. Okay. Times by its mass. Mass for the food is 100. Where do you get this mass, this value of mass? Let's look again from this example. Okay. If the product flow rate, flow rate meaning that it's always been having with time. Okay. Kilogram per hour. If the product flow rate is 100 kilogram per hour, so the mass flow rate for the food product is 100 kilogram per hour. So that's why we use it here. This one is the mass flow rate, 100. And the question asks you to calculate water flow rate because we do not know how much water should we add into the system in order for us to achieve this temperature for the food product. Our main goal is to achieve low temperature for the food product. So this value, the MW is the unknown that we need to calculate. Alright, so you will get this M, is this is the unknown. So calculate the unknown, you will get the value of 459.33 kilogram per hour. That one is the mass flow rate for the cooling water. Okay, let's move on to the following example. Steam. Okay, steam is being used for peeling potatoes. This one is very common for peeling potatoes, for onions. Normally, we will use steam because we want to loosen out the integrity of the skin and it's easier for the manufacturer or for the processor to remove the skin from the product, from the potato, from the onion. Okay, steam is being used for peeling potatoes in a semi-continuous operation. And steam, okay now, 
this one please take note over here steam is being supplied at the rate of 4 kilogram per 100 kilograms of unpeeled potato 100 kilogram of unpeeled potato entering into the system you need to use 4 kilogram of steam in order for you to peel the skin of the potato so if let's say i put 200 kilograms of unpeeled potato right 200 kilograms so what will be the amount of steam that required to remove the skin of the peeled potato what is the mass of steam if 100 kilogram you will require 4 kilogram so if you have 200 kilograms of unpeeled potato then you require double amount of steam meaning that 8 kilograms of steam in order for you to peel off the skin of potato Okay, the unpeeled potato, it enters the system at a temperature of 17 degrees Celsius and it leaves at 35 degrees Celsius after the skin has been loosened out. It goes out from the system at 35 degrees Celsius. Okay, the waste stream. What is this waste stream? Waste stream is the um, dirty water as well as the skin of the potato. Leaves at 60 degrees Celsius because steam, basically, the temperature is very high. It's more than 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, uh, the specific heat of unpeeled potatoes, waste stream, and peeled potatoes are given respectively. Okay, we have 3.7, 4.2, as well as 3.5. And please take note for this particular unit is kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. Okay, if the heat content, okay, this particular heat content. This heat content, this one is meant for lambda, H. Okay, this one is CPT. Okay, um, if the, sorry, this one is the uh, lambda, is the enthalpy. If the uh, heat content of the steam is 2750 kilojoule per kilogram, calculate the quantities of waste stream and the peeled potatoes from the process. So, you need to calculate two items. One is the waste stream and the other one is the peeled potatoes. Okay, so first thing first, what you need to do is uh, from this problem statement, you need to draw a block diagram. Draw a block diagram and then please make sure that you put all the known data into your block diagram because you need to identify which product is going into the system, which product is going out from the system it will ease your calculation so that you will not confuse yourself okay so from the problem statement we have food product we have unpeeled potatoes that entering into the system for example we use the value that has been given in the problem statement 100 kilograms of unpeeled potatoes for 100 kilograms of unpeeled potatoes i need 4 kilograms of steam okay and then uh, the product, it going out from the system uh, at 35 degrees Celsius, but we do not know what is the mass of the product. We only know the mass for the product going into the system, but the peeled potato, the mass of peeled potato, we do not know. This one is unknown. Okay. And then the waste stream, we also do not know what is the mass for the waste stream. All right. And the temperature for the waste stream is 60 degrees Celsius. Okay, so now for problem statement, this one I have listed all the known data. Okay, for the unknown that you need to calculate, you need to calculate for two items. One is the waste stream, mass of waste stream and the other one is mass for the peeled potato for the product. Alright, so we take the basis 100 kilograms of unpeeled potato. We just use whatever the information that has been given um, in the problem statement. Okay, for this particular problem statement, you need to use two balances. One is mass balance and the other one is energy balance. Because why you need to use both, you need to calculate for the energy balance first. Okay, then you need to solve your problem by using simultaneous equation from the mass balance. Because we have two unknowns here. Okay, so by using mass balance, Okay, from here, by using mass balance, we have two inlet and two outlets. The inlet is from food product as well as the steam. 
outlet we have for the peeled potatoes as well as waste stream.